this mixing masterclass, we're going back to basics, looking at how to use inserts and auxiliaries. When we use plugins in Amix, we're either replacing the input signal with our process signal, and regular compression is a good example, or we're adding to the input signal, which is usually the case with delay or reverb. DAWs, much like hardware mixing desks, provide us with two systems, inserts and auxiliaries, to achieve these tasks. With treatments such as EQ and Dynamics, we usually want our processing to replace the input signal, and that is why an insert is perfect for the job. This is perhaps best demonstrated by a noise gate, which is essentially open or closed, albeit with some form of amount setting. Even so, and this is where the lines get blurred, plenty of plugins that you might not expect now include some kind of mix blend control. This is particularly true of compressors, which can then provide basic parallel compression. But other examples include multi-effects and even filters. We've loaded up examples of both as serial inserts to process a loop, setting both mix blends to taste. Although inserts are required for certain types of processing, they can also be well suited to tasks where an auxiliary would work. For example, if we want to add a specific reverb to a single track or even submix. Try this on a spot effect. We're processing a clap with its own dedicated reverb insert followed by a compressor. When we use auxiliaries to add effects, we send an adjustable amount of the dry or source signal to a separate auxiliary bus. On the bus return, we place our effect and set its mix blend to 100% wet. The dry and wet signals thus combine in the mix bus. We can change the level of additive effects simply by adjusting the auxiliary send. And here we're adding reverb to vocals, a typical use for auxiliary sends. You used to burn. So what other reasons are there to use auxiliaries? Firstly, you can easily send one track to multiple auxiliary buses. Secondly, you can also share the auxiliary effects between multiple sources, and this often helps to create a cohesive mix. We've set up two further reverbs, and by using the appropriate auxiliary sends, these can be shared by multiple tracks. Auxiliaries also offer some further signal flexibility. They are typically sourced after the fader level and pan, and in a mix situation this makes sense, as if you turn your fader down, less level gets sent to the auxiliary and therefore less effect is added. However, auxiliaries can also be sent pre-fader level, or sometimes with their own independent pan setting, creating options that would be hard to achieve with track inserts. Here we've used the track level fader to fade out our synth track, but we wanted to create an extended reverb wash. By using a pre-fader send, we've adjusted the effect send independently to create an effect after the source signal has faded out. Finally, using an auxiliary bus allows us to pre-process the signal being sent to an effect. A good practical application is when we need to de-s just the input to a reverb. And here, we've achieved this by using an auxiliary send and inserting a de in the bus return before the reverb. You used to burn. 